This hub and dock right here is a little bit different. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, for starters, my job is really fun. And people always ask me, why is that? Well, companies love to send me tech, all right? And I get to review it, or I get to at least showcase it to you. And that's no different today. So what I got sent here, this is by a company called Quiz Lab over here. And then and we'll get into the, all the model number and everything like that. But this is kind of a hub or a dock for your M4, M4 Pro Mac Mini sitting right here. You can see it sitting in there. And this one's quite unique. And I actually thought I would make a video on this because it's got some unique features that I think kind of separate this from the competition. And that's always a good thing. And another cool thing with these hubs and docks right now is they're all becoming, they're all starting to get 40 gigabit per second SSD enclosures built into them for very, very fast storage. So let's just assume you wanted to add two terabytes of storage to your M4 Mac mini from Apple. Take a look over here. It would be $800. See that $800? And you can do it with this hub here with a two terabyte drive for around 250, somewhere in that range. So the savings are huge to add that storage. And the storage in here is actually faster than the base M4 Mac mini. And I'm going to show that to you. But if it doesn't perform well, then it's not worth it, right? So what we're going to do in the video is I'm going to go ahead and test the SSD a couple different ways. I'm also going to show you all the different ports. And then I'm going to give you a couple features. I think there's three of them on this that make this fairly unique kind of in the field right now. So if you want to learn more about this and find out what those unique features are, stay tuned. Okay, so introducing in my hand right here, this is the QuizLab UH61U4. Maybe I'll put the model number right up there so you can go ahead and take a look at it. Now this is actually compatible only right now with the M4 and the M4 Pro Mac Mini. I have actually the M4 Pro Mac Mini sitting in here right now. Now the M4, it probably will be compatible with the M5 unless Apple does another drastic change. We don't know for sure, but earlier models this won't work with. Okay, to start with, we're going to go through the price, and then we're going to go through all the ports and the features and what makes it unique, and then finally do the SSD test. And again, check the timeline for all that stuff if you want to jump ahead. So look over here. This is going to be from Amazon right now. It's $129. You can see it right here. It does have a 5% coupon, so that's going to take the price down right away. And then you can save an additional 10%, but always look for sales on this. You can get it on Amazon, and they also sell it on their website over here. It's called the UH61U4. They're selling it for $129 right now as well. And uh, we'll get into all this in a second, but definitely check these. I'll have these links in the description to both of these sites here. So you can go ahead and take a look at them and get more information on them. And you can go ahead and purchase them if you actually like this. So I just wanted to kind of show you the price. And I think at the end of the video, we'll tell you if we think it's a fair price. All right, so let's talk about now how we're gonna mount the computer into the hub and the dock, because it's a little bit unique here. So what you have to do, first of all, is there's a cable coming out of the hub dock in the back. I'll show you some close-ups. That plugs into your Thunderbolt 4 or Thunderbolt 5 port, and you plug that right in. That's connection number one. Now, on the front of it, there's a plastic piece that slides out, and you actually have to plug in a second port into one of the 10 gigabit per second ports on the front of the Mac Mini, and so there's two ports you plug into. Now, a lot of people might say, they might say, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Why would I be using two of my ports? And they may think, that's a bad thing. It's actually a kind of a smart idea and a good thing because what this means is from the back over here, it, it provides the full throughput that goes into the SSD enclosure. So you're going to get really, really fast speeds on that 40 gigabit per second enclosure that's actually built into this. And then the front of it plugs in and it allows all these other ports to work, which we're going to talk about in a second. So overall, I think it's a good thing because it gives you really, really fast SSD speeds because it's not sharing all that bandwidth. It's actually splitting it up. And you, you get all those ports back and then some, which is a good thing, plus really, really fast storage. Okay, so now that we have the M4 Mac Mini seated into the dock here, what are some of the ports we have? We're gonna talk about those, and then I'm gonna talk about those unique features, so stay tuned. Here we go. We got a USB-A 10 gigabit per second right here, which is actually nice to have. We have an SD card and a TF card reader, 312 megabytes per second on that, which is really fast for SD card readers, so it's a very fast one. I tested it, it works great. Then we got two USB-C 10 gigabit per second ports here also, which is great, right? We gave up one 10 gigabit in the Mac, and now we're getting two back. So we're gaining one, but we're also gaining these other ports over here. We're also gaining a few more ports on this side. I'll show you some close-ups. This is going to be um, two USB-A, but there's going to be the 2.0 version of it, so they're actually pretty slow. They're not really for data. They're more for plugging in keyboards and also mice and stuff like that, which is really nice if you actually have keyboards like that or mice or just need that kind of functionality. And then over here is one of the unique features, but it's not the main one, is you actually do have a, a audio jack over here. So the beauty of that is you have an audio jack here. And if I flip this all the way around, you have an audio jack on the front of the Mac as well. So now you can decide if you want your audio on the front or the back. And that's actually a big thing because a lot of people hated it when they moved it to the front. I didn't because I liked it because I used my headphones. But if you want speakers, now you can actually use the one back here on the back. That's really nice. 
The other big thing is if I put this down really softly so you don't hear this, um, you're going to notice that it actually has a plastic shell on the top. So the, all of this thing is made out of aluminum, the whole bottom of it. We're going to talk about the SSD in a second. But the top part here is made out of kind of a plastic. And you're going to say, is that a design flaw? I'm not sure I like the way it looks. Whatever. Now, that's not, I didn't look at it like that at all. I think it was actually really a, a good idea. And I think they did it. And I know they did it for a reason. So what, what they did this for is if you've watched my channel before, anytime you seed your, your Mac Mini into anything that's going to be metal, it's going to affect the Wi-Fi signal. And it can be drastic, all right? So they made this top piece where it actually slides into it full plastic, and it's not affecting the Wi-Fi at all. In fact, it sits up like this. You can see how it's sitting up. The actual, I believe the Wi-Fi signal comes out the bottom of it over here, and I was actually getting about five megabytes per second, uh, megabits per second faster on my Wi-Fi than actually um, just having it just without any type of hub, and that's like unheard of. All the other ones I've tested have affected it like 20 or 30 percent lower. This one actually, I mean, I can't say it's going to raise it really, but it's at least going to be about the exact same, which is which is great, right? I mean, I can't complain with that because I've tested so many of these things where it did affect it. So by making this plastic, it's the first one I saw that kind of alleviated it's that issue and I'm going to give them some credit quiz lab here because they did something good here. Oh yeah, and one more thing I forgot to mention for people that hate this is you can now actually get to the power button really easily. It's sitting right down there. By this design, you can grab it easily. You can hit the button. To me it wasn't a huge issue, but I know a lot of people complain about it all the time and this solves it. Okay, so now let's talk about the SSD enclosure that's built into the bottom of it at 40 gigabit per second. And it's actually really fast just because of the fact that it's using that kind of dedicated Thunderbolt 4 or Thunderbolt 5 connection into your Mac Mini and not sharing all that bandwidth. So I give them some credit here because they built this really, really, and I'll show you some close-ups, but it's a really thick metal kind of a heat sink on the bottom of it. Now, in order to get in there, I also like this. It's, it does, you don't need to unscrew four different screws, but you basically pry off this little piece and I'll show you a close-up where that is. But you do need to kind of a screwdriver or something to get in there and just pry it open and it works really well. It's, I think it's held on by really strong magnets. Now, in inside this, when it comes, you know, shipped in the box and the box is right here. Let me, I'll just show you a close-up of the box right now. There it is right there. But it does come with some heat tape here and I'll show you that. Um, I got a couple of them sitting right here and a screwdriver and then a screw to screw the actual SSD in. So it's really easy. And if you look in there, you can see that it can, it can accommodate various sizes of M.2 NVMe drives. But you really want to go ahead and find one that's going to work well with this. And I'm going to show you which one I use. Now, if you go to their website, I'll show you kind of a, a listing here. So on their website, they're going to showcase all the drives that work well with this device. So take a look at this. You can go ahead and pause this screen if you want to. I'm going to link to this also in the video description if you want to come back and check this out. If you haven't, you know, just come back and check it out later. Now, what I use in mine is I use the Western Digital SN770 because it's on the list. You can see it right there. So I figured why not use it? We'll see how fast this is. I even have faster drives, but I wanted to see how fast this was. Now, keep in mind that I'm plugging into, this is going to be the M4 Pro Mac Mini, so I have Thunderbolt 5. You'll have maybe Thunderbolt 4. So it should be fairly close to this. I mean, it might affect it just a slightly, but it's only 40 gigabit per second back here, so it's not going to be a huge difference. So we're going to do a couple tests now, and we're going to see how fast this is. So I'm going to do a, a black magic test, which, you know, you can never trust fully. And then after that, we're going to do a full 100 gigabyte data test, which you can trust fully. And we're going to come back and see just how fast this is, and if this kind of separated cord is really doing this some favors, which I think it could. Okay, look at my screen, and we're going to go ahead and do this test with Blackmagic first. And uh, let's see what we get here. So we got 3385.8 there on the writes, 3400 on the reads, really fast speed. So again, 3355 on the writes, and then again on the reads here, 3403. So you can see here, that's actually way faster. That drive is way faster than the base level M4 Mac Mini. So if people ask you, is it going to be fast enough? That's way faster. I think the, the base level is only getting around 2,000, and we're up over like 3,000, 3,500 here. So really fast because of that dedicated connection. But it may not hold true, right? It may not be you know accurate for a 100 gig test. So let's go ahead and do that next. Okay, on the screen over here, I have 100 gigs of files right here. I think there's nine separate files in here. I'm going to go ahead and drop it into the drive and click this timer here. And this is going to give us a good idea of how, how long it takes, basically, to transfer 100 gigabytes of data. And as you can see up here, we're already on, what, 31, 33, 35. It's just moving really fast. We're only up to 11 seconds, and it's over half done. So let's just let this go through. But you're going to see how fast this thing is. It just blazes through this data, 100 gigabytes, mind you. And uh, again, it's because I think of that dedicated cord. And, and, and you know, obviously, if you had other things plugged in, it's going to make more of a difference. Also, I'm in, I'm in a Thunderbolt 5, but still. Look at that, 27.8 seconds. I mean, let's just go ahead and do the math on this. All right, so let's if we go ahead and punch in the math here. I'm going to do 100,000 divided by 27, I believe, 0.8. 
we're going to see this is going to give us how many megabytes per second? 3,000, what is it? 3,597. So it's actually even faster than the black magic there. You can go ahead and see just by doing the math on that, how long it took to move that data. We're getting faster speeds in the black magic. Okay, one thing I wanted just to show you really quickly, if you look over here, I was using the Western Digital Black SN770 one terabyte. That was the drive I was using for my test here. And the thing to note here is I actually have, this tells you, this is kind of a chart here that tells you how much of this, it's called SLC cache that each disk drive has. And you can see it's over 300 gigabytes right here. See this where it drops? I actually looked it up and that's where it is. This goes to show you that you can transfer about 300 gigabytes straight on that drive before it hits its SLC cache and then it'll drop off. So when you're looking at devices like this down here, the hub. The hub is actually not, not really to blame in a lot of cases. Make sure you pick a drive that's actually got a higher SLC cache. It's going to allow you longer kind of these, these massive throughput copies like I was doing. That can be 200, in 200 gigabytes, 300 gigabytes. But once you reach the cache, you're going to slow down and you're going to kind of blame the hub or the dock, but it's really the drive you have to blame. So definitely go out to this video. Again, check out my, I did a video on this a while back right here. Check out this one right here. It's going to show you how to use this website over here to figure all that out. And then pick a good one from that list or pick the one I picked. Now, the one thing about this one, it is kind of a hotter drive. It runs fairly hot. So what you need to do with this one is you do need to actually kind of thermally cool this right. And when you put the drive in, you want to make sure that you actually have enough heat tape on it, this heat tape right here, so that it touches the bottom of this plate here. And as you mentioned, or as I showed you before, this metal plate that comes off, I'll show you a close up of it, it's really thick and it's got a lot of metal there. But if the SSD drive is not touching the thermal tape and that thermal tape is not touching the back of this, this is doing you no good. So make sure you get thick enough tape, whether you have to go out and buy it or whether you have to use both of those strips down there and make sure it's touching this back plate so it can dissipate the, dissipate the heat to the back plate. Now this thing's gonna get warm no matter what because it's it, when it does get warm, that means it's bringing the heat from the SSD drive into that metal plate. So you might feel some heat around it. But you know you want to make sure this is done right, otherwise it's going to feel even warmer. So just keep in mind that if it does feel warm, that's okay, but make sure it's touching that plate. It's really important for cooling this. All right, so what are my final thoughts on this, and is this worth $130? I really do think it is for a couple unique reasons. Number one, you get the kind of the plastic shell up here, which helps with Wi-Fi. It doesn't hurt it. It actually maybe helps a little bit with it and you get some good cooling there as well. So I think that's actually a really good design there that a lot of these other ones did not have. That's number one. Number two is the audio, kind of the audio jack they put on the opposite side of the Mac mini. So now you can choose between both of those if that's a, kind of an issue to you. Obviously there's also, you can get to the power really easily with this as well. That's kind of a small one. The really the, the big third one here is gonna be this dedicated kind of cable here that goes into your Mac mini. Now it can go into the Thunderbolt 4 or Thunderbolt 5 on the Pro version. Now even if you have a Thunderbolt 4 Mac mini over here, you might not get as, you know, as exactly the same speeds as I did, but I'm guessing it's gonna be close to 3000 megabytes per second, just off my base, based off my experience and stuff with these things. So you're still gonna get very close to around, you know, let's just say 2,900. But with the M, you saw with the M4 Pro that I had, actually had connected into there, we're talking like 3,400 megabytes per second. And I think it's because of that dedicated cable. So overall, I love that kind of design. And while you have to plug into two ports, you get them back and you get really fast speeds on the SSD. Okay, let's talk about the only negatives that I found. I mean, one of them is gonna be subjective. It's gonna be the design of it, right? You either like it setting up your Mac Mini or you don't, that's number one. And this plastic piece here, you may look at it and say, why, why was it plastic? I like all the aluminum. Well, they did it for a reason, so I totally accept it. It helps with Wi-Fi for sure. And I thought it's kind of a great way to kind of, you know, get around that issue. So they, they, they thought about that. And this is the first one that I saw that actually did it. There might be other ones out there, but this is the first one that I tested. The only other negative is you do need to cool this properly. Make sure that the actual um, heat tape is touching the bottom of this plate. Otherwise, you're going to get a little warm in kind of the body here. If you do it right, it should still be warm, but it's not going to be anything crazy. And I've been using it for a while now, and I've had no issues with it as long as you go ahead and cool it correctly. But you just kind of have to spend a little bit of time there or maybe get a little bit thicker tape if you need it. So those are some of the only negatives. But overall, all the other ports work great. So I can't report back any negatives right now, um, you know, at the end of the day. Okay, we're gonna wrap this up, but just keep in mind that I'm only one person testing one unit here, and I've only had it for a short time. So I can't give you a long-term you know, review of this in any stretch. It's more of a product showcase. I'm more excited about it because it's got some differences there, but realistically, like I said, always do your own research. Always look at other, you know, other opinions out there and stuff on devices like this, because I'm only one person, you know, I've had it for a couple weeks now, and that's all I can do with this kind of stuff, but I can kind of showcase you what I found and then go from there, right? So just do your own research before you make any purchase. I always say that in my videos, but so far, so good. And, you know, I, I can't complain with this thing. If you have an M4 Mac Mini, M4 Pro Mac Mini, and uh, you need something like this and you want to add, you know, two, four, eight, eight terabytes of storage for a very reasonable cost, 
I think it's a good option. And if you use Ether, you know, if you're not using Ethernet and using Wi Fi, it's even a better option. Okay, so we'll talk to you in the next video. Ah, I can rest. See you soon. Peace.